Hi everybody, Pastor Scott here. I want to continue on with our study of Galatians. And what I'd like to do uh, is wind up this part of uh, the book. It's still been introductory up to this point. And Paul does an interesting thing. I want to show you a pivotal verse in, um, uh, in this chapter 2 that causes us then to go directly into the heart of what Paul is trying to say to the Galatians. So as far as these verses, Galatians 2, 1 through 10, the last that we had read together was Paul saying uh, he didn't want to be running or, uh, you know, in vain. So here uh, we see that. We see that he was talking about how that he had gone up to Jerusalem with Barnabas and Titus, and he submitted his gospel uh, to those who were of reputation. That's the apostles particularly and, uh, the, and the elders. So he gives an account here of the atmosphere that was going on. You can compare this to... Uh, Acts chapter 15 and the account of the Jerusalem council. But it sounds as though that um, when he arrived there uh, with uh, Barnabas and Titus and whoever else was with him, there was some pressure for Titus to be circumcised. Paul says, not even Titus, who was with me, though he was a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. But it was because of the false brethren secretly brought in who had sneaked in to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, in order to bring us into bondage. Now, so it seems like there was some pressure when they got there. Because if you'll remember, and if you look back at Acts chapter 15, at the Jerusalem council after Paul shared, um, you know, his gospel or, the, uh, you know, his calling to the Gentiles, there were those who um, stood up and said, no, these Gentiles, they need to follow the law and they need to be circumcised. So here then in this passage, we see Paul uh, letting us know that somehow or another, uh, Titus uh, was being compelled to be circumcised, but he did not uh, except that Paul says, but we did not yield in subjection to them for even an hour. So that's important. Now he goes on to say that uh, those of reputation made no difference to him and uh, they contributed nothing to me. Uh, but he says, uh, on the contrary, uh, seeing that I had been entrusted with the gospel to the uncircumcised, just as Peter had been to the circumcised, um, then essentially he's saying that James and Cephas and John, who were reputed to be pillars, uh, gave to Paul and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship. So they said, we recognize you guys have been sent to the Gentiles. We've been sent to uh, the Jews. And all we're asking is that you remember the poor. Paul says the very thing he was eager to do. Okay. So that kind of summarizes that part of it. Uh, now we go on here and... Um, Paul begins to really get to the point, and he's using this story and this account to lay the foundation for that discussion. So he tells a very interesting story here, and uh, so there was a point there where Peter came to Antioch, and Paul opposed him to his face because he was clearly in the wrong. So here's what happened. It says, before certain men came from James, Peter used to eat with the Gentiles. But when those certain men arrived from James, Peter began to draw back and separate himself from the Gentiles because he was afraid of those who belonged to 
the circumcision group. So we have this picture of Peter and he's eating with the Gentiles. Now the Gentiles didn't have any uh, food laws given to them uh, at this point. You can read Acts chapter 15 and see that they were told by James uh, not to um, eat things that are strangled and, and you know, there was very little that was said about that. So essentially then they're eating what they want to eat. Peter is enjoying his liberty and he's eating with them. But then here come some of those that belong to the circumcision group. And when they showed up, Peter withdrew from the Gentiles and he went over and stood, I suppose, with the circumcision group and uh, because he didn't want them to see what he had been doing. He felt uh, they, were, they were allowed to, almost like a peer pressure, uh, he felt um, uh, that they would have seen him doing that and they might have condemned him and he was weak in that. And not only that, but others joined him in his hypocrisy. So that even by their so that by their hypocrisy, even Barnabas was led astray. So Barnabas was Paul's friend. Barnabas was key in introducing Paul to the apostles. And yet, when the party of the circumcision came along, um, even Barnabas was led astray. So Paul opposed Peter to his face. He said, When I saw that they were not acting in line with the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter in front of them all, You are a Jew, yet you live like a Gentile and not like a Jew. How is it then that you force Gentiles to follow Jewish customs? So, when the party of the circumcision wasn't there, Peter was fellowshipping with the Gentiles, eating their food with them. But when the party of the circumcision showed up, uh, it was in essence that Peter was then forcing the Gentiles to follow Jewish customs. It was, uh, it was endorsing this idea that the Gentiles need to obey the law. So here's the pivotal verse. Because this is where Paul makes a transition from telling a story, as he has been telling the story of his travels and his decisions after his conversion, and then that uh, eases into this story about him confronting Peter, because Peter was being um, uh, led, uh, led astray by the party of the circumcision, and then he was leading others astray. But here's where Paul launches into the most important uh, and the main focus of his book. <clears throat> he says, We who are Jews by birth and not Gentiles know that a man is not justified by observing the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So let's, let's hear him say that again. He says, A man is not justified by observing the law, but by faith in in Jesus Christ. So since they know that, he says, so we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by observing the law. Because by observing the law, no one will be justified. So Paul is saying it's not just the Gentiles that are justified by faith in Christ, it's the only way the Jews can be saved as well. The Jews must believe uh, in Christ and by faith be justified. Their observation of the law will not make them right before God. It will not put them in a right standing. Over the years, I have um, had some conversations here and there. By the People um, can be a little surprised at this. Uh, when you tell them that the Jews cannot be justified by the law. I had someone in class argue once with me about that. Somehow or another, they had it in their mind that the Jews were able to be justified by the law and that it was only the Gentiles. But no, Paul is saying 
And he's going to say this many different ways. No man is justified by observing the law. So he continues, If while we seek to be justified in Christ, it becomes evident that we ourselves are sinners, does that mean that Christ promotes sin? Absolutely not. If I rebuild what I destroyed, I prove that I am a lawbreaker. For through the law, I died to the law, so that I might live for God. Now here's one of the most memorable and most important verses in the book of Galatians. He says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness, hear this part here, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. Now that's an important message. It's a strong message. It is the message that stood directly opposite to the circumcision party. And it is the gospel that Paul says, if someone preaches something different, they let them be anathema or accursed. If, the, if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. It's because righteousness could not be gained through the law that Christ died. That's the reason. And so now the only way we enter into that justified relationship is through faith in Jesus Christ. Now, this is where we're headed. We're going to begin talking uh, in depth about this part, well, this, this gospel, this uh, pillar of the gospel, and um, you don't want to quit now. It's going to be good.